Kyle, what was life like for you before your diagnosis with bipolar disorder? Growing up, I had a lot of friends, played a lot of video games, read some books, played some sports. I was actually very good at basketball. It's my favorite sport. I, I was a sponge growing up and I basically used the world as my classroom. Kyle, when did you first show signs of having bipolar disorder and what triggered these symptoms? I was diagnosed with ADHD in fifth grade. I was very manic on my own terms, no excess drugs. I was very manic. They gave me the meds to keep quiet. I actually had an episode on a basketball bench. I was rocking back and forth and talking to myself. I've been taken out of classroom environments and I'd go outside and just talk to myself and I'm just screaming, crying, and like laughing. It's really intense, but I had no idea that I showed signs at that point. Kyle. How did you handle the news about your new mental classification? 2006, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder after I took an ecstasy tab that made me go into crazy manic proportions. I felt like a victim at first, but to be honest, when I woke up from that hospital for my first day of intake, there was a, there was a facilitator named Jesse and he said, bro, you did a number on your brain. What I did is I just laughed and walked away. When I first got my disorder, I was cool with it. I was fried. I literally needed to do some work on my brain to get it back into working shape. Kyle, were you compliant of doctors and the advice from the facilitators? To be honest, I was somewhat compliant. I was down for the cause. When I first got my medicine, when I woke up from my uh, three days sleep, they gave me a sedative. I was up for six days from the ecstasy and I slept for three days straight. I woke up. I took liquid meds. We took liquid Abilify, Risperdal, and Depico. We poured it in a cup, and I would stir it up into orange juice. I would just chug it, just like an addict would. It's pretty intense, but when I got out, I did not take my meds, and I smoked weed directly after discharge. Kyle, what was life like after returning to society after your first manic episode? This manic episode was intense. This is the first time I ever went into inpatient ICU mental care. I stayed for 30 days the first time, and that's like a record breaker for a lot of people. People usually go five days a week max. I stayed times four. I was insane. I got out, did the weed, did the thing, did not focus on it. But I did go to college for a semester, and I actually did very well. But I just couldn't keep it up. And my bipolar got worse, and things just became complicated over time. Kyle, I know a lot of us want to know, when did you first see signs of improvement and uh, what were you doing at that time in your treatment? I eventually manned up and took my meds. I had to do it. A lot of people who are bipolar, they like the feeling of their mania so they don't take their meds and they like the feeling of the drugs so they don't take their meds. I didn't really adopt the meds, but I took them when I could, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, just smoke some weed. But a lot of these drugs, psychosis is involved with the use and Basically, when I got results that were positive, I was refraining from drugs, outside drugs, not prescribed, and I was taking my meds. I didn't get this until like four years after being diagnosed. I like to get on a simplified regimen with my doctors. Kyle, do you have any regrets about the choices you have made, and are you willing to accept your new life? I've had regrets, but they all went away after I started believing in a greater cause. I started believing more into God later on in my psychosis, so therefore, you know, it's free will, can't really mess up, people love you no matter what. I didn't have these guidelines growing up. So actually, yeah, I did have regret, but I learned in my future days that it was all good, you know, it was all good. Kyle, have you had success through your new mental status? At first, it was bumpy. I'll be honest, it was real bumpy. I started taking my meds every day, not doing drugs. I got high off doing the right thing going home, taking your meds. I had meds in the morning, afternoon, and at night. So I went to my doctor and I said, you know what, I can't do that. I'm not responsible and I don't have a schedule to do that. I told the doctor, I just want to take it before bed. They compromised, made my life a whole lot easier. Kai, what advice would you tell your audience who is mentally ill? Don't make it harder than it has to be. Let go completely. You must surrender, you must take your meds. I'm not gonna say must take your meds. This is what works for me, but you know, I'm not you, but I really suggest there's no outside chemicals and just take what your doctors say. It's not rocket science. Go to support groups and try to learn about your own disease.